Hey everybody, this is Fran from the 5 Minute Modeler and today we're going to unbox a, another Atlas engine. This one happens to be the GP9 uh, torpedo tube locomotive, Grand Trunk, number 4921. And this is in the Gold Series. This is uh, the one that is equipped with the ESU Loc Sound uh, decoder and it does have sound to that, so we'll check that out. And just a little bit of information on these. Um, I think they've re released both a GP7 and a GP9. So we're gonna take this out of the box. I, I got this from uh, Lombard Hobby, and they're not paying me or anything. I just, I happen to like them as a, uh, as a company, and uh, they do a great job. They uh, actually will take these out of the box and run them to make sure that they run properly. And so, this is a pretty clean model, and I'm going to um, do a comparison to an older GP9 torpedo tube model that they come out with in the in the past. Uh, again, this is the Master Series, so these are new dies and, and so forth, so it's, it's uh, supposed to be sharper and crisper than the old ones. And uh, we'll take a look at those here. Um, there's not much difference between the GP9s and the GP7s, quite frankly. Uh, inside there was a bigger motor in the, in the GP9s, but beyond that, uh, really wasn't uh, a whole lot. Once in a while you'll, you'll be able to count different louvers and doors and things like that, but uh, you have to really be a, a total rivet counter to be able to see that. So um, one of the questions that, that comes up a lot is, uh, and Atlas seems to be doing a lot of these uh, with the GP9s, is these torpedo tubes which are up here on the top. And essentially, these are air reservoir uh, uh, tubes that, that used to be down in the bottom of the older GP9s. And they put them on top so they could increase the size of the fuel tank. And that would increase the, uh, the distance they could go before refueling. So, and Atlas has two options. You can buy the Gold Series like this with the Loc Sound decoder. Or you can buy the Silver Series, which has no decoder. Um, but it's the exact same engine. My understanding is that the Silver Series also has a uh, built-in speaker so that you don't have to add a speaker, which is one of the problems with N-Scales, trying to find uh, a speaker that you can uh, put in. Uh, if you're not gonna do sound, you're gonna do DC, that's fine, that works fine. I do, um, I've heard some things, and I don't know for sure if this is the case, but that the, um, the uh, old uh, like NCE decoders do not work in this, or the Digitrax decoders, little drop-in decoders. I don't know. I haven't taken them apart to see. Yeah, I, I think it's a really different design on the mechanism than the older style ones. I have a bunch of the older style. They're really easy to drop in, um, you know, the uh, NCE or, or uh, Digitrax, but uh, these look like they'll be a little bit more challenging. Uh, if you get the ESU ones, of course, it, it's really made for that, so. Okay. Okay, let's do a quick comparison here to the older style. Now, this engine right here I've had since about 1998 or 9, when these uh, first came out. It's kind of the first generation that Atlas came out with of the GP9s. I, I shouldn't say that. I mean, the, Atlas has been coming out with GP9s since, like, the early 70s, I think. But they were mostly oversized and had crummy motors in them and things like that so uh in the, in the late 90s they came out with this this version here again it's a torpedo tube it's um i think these are, are phase two uh because of the four maybe phase three but i can't remember uh because of the number of radiators on the top radiator fans and uh one of the big differences right away that you see is uh the handrails were not painted white I have to go back and look to see if they really were painted white or black in, in some of the old photos that I have for Grand Trunk. But that's a kind of a minor detail. Um, one thing that I noticed right off the bat is, and hopefully you can see this, um, is the one on the left is the old one, the one on the right is the new one. And it's really um, small. But the numbers, the number boards there, one, they're in white versus black, which Grand Trunk did both. But there's a black outline around the, uh, around the window that the light is in or that the, that the number board's in. And that's um, 
uh, very prototypical. It's like a rubber gasket, I think, that goes around that. And then I can also see that the uh, safety chain in the, uh, in the middle is painted red. So that's a nice little touch. I guess I need to do that on, on this other model. Um, but other than that, I think they're relatively the same. These are black, so it's kind of hard to tell in the light here. I mean, the decaling is really crisp. The numbers are good. The, um, the tops are about the same. Now, I had an ESU look sound put into this uh, locomotive by a friend of mine, Benjamin, and uh, he also added a strobe light on top. I don't know if you can see, but it flashes and it's got a separate control on the, on the controller. Um, but again, the paint, it looks very good. I think it's very crisp and I think Atlas does a great job with these um, paint schemes. And then they came out with some, uh, some blue versions and um, I think this is, you can see here, it's a little bit different. Uh, same numbering scheme, they're all numbered in that 4900 uh, scheme until probably the 90s. But uh, very good detail on this as well. Uh, they did not paint the uh, safety chain red. I'm not sure when they would when they did that. that. I wonder if that's later. And again, it's got the torpedo tubes on top. Okay, let's uh, let's see how this thing runs. <clears throat> I've got the other two on the left that uh, I showed it a second ago. Um, I have not program this or anything this is right out of the box and I just set it on the tracks I think all the wheels are on that one thing I did notice that's different than the other two uh, I think probably a cost-saving thing in the old days the horns for the old are on the on the short hood and on this newest version they're on the long hood which would have been more prototypical for the Grand Trunk other railroads may have ran them long hood forward or short hood forward but uh, Grand Trunk, as I mentioned, usually did them long hood when they could. All right, so this is going to be locomotive three. And I'm going to do this without the sound first. And you can see that it's crawling right at speed step one. I'll put the headlight on. Well, that's pretty good right out of the box. Step two. One thing I like about these two is that they're already programmed with momentum, so they don't stop right on a dime. You have to plan for that. It makes it interesting in your operations. All right, so let's um, let's pull that thing up a little closer, and we'll start the uh, sound features and check those out. I believe these are all changeable if you've got the, the look sound programmer and everything too so see if the horn works yeah that's not going to work for me i think that's a single chime horn and uh they use two or three it's kind of cheesy yeah an interesting bell sound as well I have to work on that one as well as figure out how to change that. Okay, that's annoying, so we're going to turn that off. And then let's hear what the engine startup cycle is like.
Okay, so that um, sounds a lot like the uh, the ones I remember, and it sounds a lot like the uh, black one there, the 4913 as well, which I'll uh, I'll start up here as well, and you'll you'll hear the horn on that this program. That's the horn on the 4913. That's the bell. And do the startup. The good thing is the volume is paired pretty well compared to that other one with the 4913. So that's good. It does take a few seconds for the engine when it shuts down to, to uh, be able to restart, just so you know that. Alright, so, let's see what we got here. I have a fairly long train, I believe it's about 20 cars. And we're going to hook up to it and see how well this thing would go. Okay, with a 20 car train, it seems to be slipping. And this is uh, very, very level, I think. So let's knock off a few cars and see, uh, see how it does then. Okay, I've got about 18 cars on this train right now, and it seems to be pulling it fine. Um, I say 18 because I've got a couple of 89-foot uh, uh, auto racks on there, and they kind of count as two cars. Um, all the, all the uh, trains have uh, microtrains wheels, so they're in pretty good shape there. And um, so, Interestingly, I weighed each of these engines and they uh, all weighed a little bit differently. The blue engine with the original uh, frame and no uh, nothing cut out of it uh, weighed at just under three ounces using my handy dandy postal scale from the 1960s. And, uh, and the uh, 4913 that had the the ESU uh, decoder put in by my friend Benjamin, and I think he had to carve away some of the uh, frame to get it to fit. Uh, that weighed in uh, a little bit lighter than, than the blue one. And as I suspected, the 4921 came in just a hair under that as well. Uh, at least eyeballing it. Somebody with a digital scale may be able to come up with the uh, better, better measurements there. But you can see with 18 cars on flat ground, it's... Uh, it's moving really well. It's pushing and, and pulling without any problems. But overall, I think uh, Atlas has done a good job. Um, I got to figure out how to fix the uh, horn sounds and the bell sounds. I'm not happy with that. Uh, I know that um, that the ESU uh, is capable of, of a lot more sounds than this. So I need to read up and see how I might be able to change that. Um, getting something more meaty than that and uh, but overall I think you know from from a looks perspective I give it an A plus um, from a, uh, a sound perspective I give it a B it probably is an A if I get the right horn and bells but out of the box and then um, from a performance standpoint um, I I think it does pretty well with 18 cars that's uh, pulling a bit of weight and, and I weigh my cars uh, pretty much to the NMRA standard, so you know, it's quite a bit of weight there. Uh, your, your mileage may vary, but it's a pretty good engine. So thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, put them down in the uh, comments there, and we'll uh, answer them as soon as we can. So thanks for joining another 5-Minute Modeler, and we'll catch you again. Thanks.